Hello everyone. Hola a todos. My name is David and I'm excited to show you what is new in Excel during the next half hour. Before starting, let me introduce myself. I am a product manager on the Microsoft Excel team. Before building Excel, it was essentially my right arm since I was using it every day in service planning and in management consulting before that. I am originally from Bogota, Colombia and currently live in San Francisco. Other than spreadsheets, I love road biking and coffee. The features I will talk about today all revolve around these three pillars. The first one is hybrid work. We want Excel to be the best choice to working together. The second one are data-driven decisions, building on Excel's capabilities to organize and understand your data to make better decisions. And finally, modernization of the app making sure that it is reliable, fast, accessible, and extensible. The way we work together has changed, and we are making Excel ideal for hybrid work. The highlights here are the web app that allow you to work anywhere, and amazing capabilities for collaboration that build on our real-time co-authoring introduced a few years ago. Excel for the Web started as a companion app used mainly for consumption of content. Since then, we've transformed the app into a modern spreadsheet experience with collaboration capabilities that supports most of the Excel workflows. Throughout this journey, we've constantly listened to your feedback to ensure the experience is seamless. We've added known and loved Excel features like conditional formatting, data validation, tables, pivot tables, cell styles, print, and more. We also know you want the app to just work, so we've done significant performance improvements to support better rendering and a faster and smoother user experience. You can now work with larger and more complex workbooks as well. I encourage you to try Excel for the web and see it for yourself. It is also available for free with your personal Microsoft account. Let me show you a brief video of Excel for the web's evolution. Excel for the web exemplifies the evolution of one of Microsoft's most successful web products. What began as an app used for consumption, with files open in view by default, has become a full-featured modern spreadsheeting experience. Millions of users rely on the power of Excel in their work, Excel for the Web brings this power to the browser. With Excel for the Web, you can access your spreadsheets on any device from anywhere and collaborate with your colleagues. We've made major investments in Excel for the Web, focusing on performance, reliability, authoring, and collaboration. We are now supporting faster workbook loading, smoother and faster scrolling, and cell selection. Now you can work with larger, more complex workbooks that support faster calculations. Files are now open for edit by default. So now you can get your work done with familiar Excel features such as writing formulas more easily with colored cell references, formatting data with cells and table styles, highlighting data with conditional formatting, and applying data validation to cells. Choose between either the classic ribbon or a modern, simplified ribbon with all the functionality. Get insights with BI and data analysis features. For example, analyze your data with the new and improved pivot table experience. Co-authoring lets you work simultaneously with your colleagues on the same cloud workbook so you can see their changes update in real time. Use Show Changes to see any edits made to your spreadsheet leave comments, and at mentions. As we continue to improve Excel for the web, you'll see the newest and most innovative features on the web first. Try Excel for the web to explore all these features and more. One of the most recent collaboration improvements we've added is Show Changes. It allows you to collaborate with confidence by showing file changes at a cell level for up to 60 days. You can see details about who changed what, where, and when, 
along with the previous value of the cell for a quick revision if you need to. You can think of it as a safety net, knowing that any changes done by others are being tracked for the entire workbook. The second feature around collaboration that I want to highlight is Excel Live for Microsoft Teams. It allows you to edit your spreadsheet directly from the Teams meeting window with content, video, and chat all in the same place, not needing to switch between windows. It is built in Teams for Enterprise and currently in public preview. But better than telling you, let me show you what the experience is like. Excel Live delivers a new way to collaborate in real time during Teams meetings. When you select an Excel file from the share tray, it doesn't just share the screen for others to see. It allows attendees to collaborate with the Excel file right from the meeting itself. The view will follow the presenter, but you can also interact, explore, and simply sync back to the presenter view to rejoin the discussion. The best part is that you can easily edit the Excel file right from the meeting window without anyone having to leave the meeting screen or open the file separately. And just like with PowerPoint Live, you can also initiate the same experience directly from Excel by clicking Share, followed by the Work Together in Teams option. Now, let's switch to how we're making Excel even better for data-driven decisions. Here, we have features that include AI-powered data analysis, connected pivot tables, new formula capabilities, and Power Query for Mac and for the web. When it comes to analyzing data, we are infusing Excel with AI to find insights and simplify your workflows. In addition to new pivot table recommendations, the Analyze Data pane allows you to create charts, pivot charts, and even functions with just one click. You can even use natural language to better understand your data. Let me jump to Excel and show you this in action. Here I have Excel for the web. Insert pivot tables shows the new experience. You can insert a pivot table that is blank or insert one of the recommended options. From there, you can add new fields to continue analyzing or summarizing your data. Likewise, in the Home tab, you can find the Analyze Data button. Selecting it opens the recommendations, and you can choose to insert any of the pivot charts, pivot tables, charts, or interact with your data using natural language. Once you choose any of the suggestions, they are inserted into a new sheet. For example, I can ask here, for the best selling category. This recommends a pivot table with the category that has the highest sum of sales. I can also ask for the rating by product. This generates a pivot chart with the average rating by product. Note that I didn't explicitly ask for average, but the model correctly adds up sales and averages ratings. Maybe I want to check the highest rated category, in this case, also accessories. And finally, I can do more elaborate queries, like how many products were sold in 2021? In which case, the query is interpreted as distinct products filtering the date to 2021, giving me 25. Switching gears, we know that you don't always have the data in your spreadsheet. This is why we've worked very closely with our friends from Power BI to bring you their data sets into Excel. You can now insert pivot tables connected to Power BI with an experience customized to the specific data that you have access to. Until now, if you wanted to have a pivot table connected to Power BI, you had to start there and then choose Analyze in Excel. In addition to recent improvements to this experience, now we're bringing this directly to the grid. Let me jump into the product and show you what this looks like. Here, I'm in Excel. You can find this feature under the Insert tab, Insert Pivot Table, 
or you can also find it in Get Data from Power BI. So when I click either of those two entry points, I get this pane that lists all the data sets that I have available in my organization where I already have access and permissions. This is my Contoso tenant, and here the user Megan Bowen has all these different data sets available. We also pull the certification labels and promoted labels. If you're familiar with Power BI, these are stamps of approval that admins can give to different data sets to prioritize those. But we also bring ones that are published by end users in the self-service workflow. Once I choose the data set, this creates the connection using the credentials that I'm logged in into Excel. Something as you'll see is this policy tip that shows your organization automatically applied the sensitivity label. These labels are part of the Microsoft Information Protection System, where we can label content in Office files and Power BI datasets. And this flows across the apps depending on the label and on the policies for the file. Once the pivot table is inserted, this is the experience as usual. You can see the different tables in the field pane, and I can drag and drop any of these into the pivot table to build my summary and analysis. An improvement we've made here is that you can drag them into the values well, so you don't need to have them defined as measures in the Power BI dataset. This is also available in Excel for the web, which opens many new scenarios, including working on Teams and working together on these files. In addition to the improvements to the client side measures, we've also improved the performance with under the hood optimizations to the MDX queries that Excel uses. So this experience is even faster. In addition to data analysis and connected pivot tables, we have also recently added new powerful functions for you to manipulate text and arrays. Excel already has a broad library of text functions, but we've added new ones that address and simplify specific needs. You can now get the text before or after delimiters with flexibility on how many instances with the functions text before and text after. And now you can split a string and generate a result in multiple cells with text split. Likewise, new array manipulation functions allow you to combine, shape, and resize arrays. Let's look at them in more detail. VStack allows me to vertically stack two or more arrays, while HStack does the same thing but placing them side by side. To call wraps the array into a single column. To row does the same into a single row. Wrap calls takes a column or row and allows you to define the number of columns at which point a new row is started. Similarly, wrap rows does the same thing, but wrapping it into multiple columns. The next one is take which allows you to get a subset of rows, columns, or both from the beginning or the end of the array. Drop is similar, but instead of keeping rows or columns, it drops those rows or columns from the beginning or end of the array. And choose rows allows you to choose specific rows from an array. Finally, we have new Excel functions, which are let and lambda. They allow you to create a custom function without needing to do VBA or Office scripts. And to wrap up, we have Power Query. It is a business intelligence tool offered by Excel that allows you to import data from multiple sources, clean that data by use it of hundreds of transformations, and to load that reshaped data into Excel so it matches your needs and you can consume it easily. In this way, you can set up a query once and reuse it later by refreshing it. 
all the transformations will be automatically applied to the new data coming in. Excel for the Mac is moving at full speed, and we are close to having Power Query capabilities available for all eligible users. You can currently refresh data from various sources and import data from local files like Excel files or text files. Very soon, you will be able to edit your data with the Power Query editor, giving you full capabilities like Excel for Windows. Note that this is currently available for insiders, and we are working to releasing it soon to general audience. Excel for the web is at an earlier stage. We are taking a phased approach, collecting feedback, and moving as fast as we can. Our aim is to bring you valuable features one by one. We have already enabled some capabilities and are continuing the work to get the full Power Query user interface to Excel for the web. Currently, you can view and manage your queries and groups using the Queries pane. You can also query your data using Office JavaScript APIs. And you can refresh that data for sources that are in the current workbook or an old data feed. Our goal, as is for Excel for the Mac, is to enable the full experience for Excel on the web. Tiller is all about ensuring that you can make the most of Excel. It includes fundamentals like performance and reliability, customer love engaging with Excel fans and making sure that we are getting your input as we build a product, and accessibility and extensibility. For these, we have a new feedback portal for you to send your ideas. Just go to the Help tab in the app and choose Feedback. You can also go to the Feedback Portal's website and view and upvote others' ideas. For performance, not only are we improving the app under the hood, we're also helping you streamline your files. Here, I have a file that is about three megabytes, not all that big, but when I check it, it only has a handful of cells. You can see in this bar that we identified optimizations for the file, so you can check the proposed improvements. We list issues with the file, like unnecessary formatting. Here, you can choose the optimizations and ranges that we are referring to so that you can then optimize each of them or all of them. Now, why don't we run this in the background? There may be cases in which you do want empty cells with formatting, so we allow you to view and confirm before they are changed. This feature is coming to Microsoft 365 subscribers, starting with Excel for the web and rolling out as we speak. Next up is a fantastic feature that was built with accessibility in mind. It allows you to review and navigate files, especially complex ones with multiple sheets and objects in a much easier and structured way. You can find the navigation button in the ribbon under the view tab. When you select it, a pane with all the different file sheets and objects appears. From here, selecting them takes you directly to them, and you can even see hidden sheets. You can also directly rename sheet names as well as hide or unhide them. For example, let's insert another object here. I can find this object under the navigation pane and directly rename it. You can also filter by name or object type to quickly find your way around the workbook. With that, I end the session today. I hope you found the content useful. If you want to learn more, make sure to check out our blog and Excel community. Thanks again and have a great day.